recently. Took a long, 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 long break. Um, essentially, I'm filming with a setup that I purchased when I decided I wanted to do more vlogs. Now, a funny thing happened after they released, after I purchased this, Sony announced a dedicated vlogging camera. Now, when I say vlogging, for me, I know a lot of people walk around with theirs. I don't see me doing that a lot, but I wanted a simple setup for the home that I could use, that I could have a light, see myself, plug in a mic, and so I ended up on the A6100 with the Sigma 16, as I talked about in the last video. Um, I have a Rode Video Micro, and I bought a light panel from, let's see, Yeah, there we go. I bought a Photix M180. I believe LoomCube is selling this rebranded for them also. Um, and a small rig set up to bring it all together. I put a blog post about it. I put it in the comments if I remember. Um, but yeah, it was a really nice setup. But the only thing is, Sony announced right after it another product that, in all honesty, now granted, I've already gone down the rabbit hole again. I've already beholden the full frame that's i'm going to keep that i have my little i call it my big boy bag i had gone back into fell down the rabbit hole of APS-C sony again uh, i think i bought now what is my third a6000 used along with that it's going to be my backup camera to this a6100 which i really really like it's an amazing camera um with that bought a small rig the, the aforementioned photix m180 and the road video micro like i said i have a blog post about it put it in here really happy with it shot a video with it was impressed with it very happy with how it turned out but then sony immediately seemingly released a product and that is the sony zv1 as you see there and i was impressed because i've owned rx100 cameras before i had an rx102 I had a RX-103. I almost bought an RX-104. Um, but then I kind of lost interest after, I think it was the 5 and 5A. After that, they had a Zeiss 24-70 equivalent, F1 to F2-8 equivalent. But then they moved on to an F2-8 to, I think, F5-6, 24-200 after that. And that's when I immediately lost interest. Because one of my favorite things about the RX-100, 2, and 3, when I had them, was the lens. The lens was simply amazing. I even say I got a great deal on a Zeiss lens that came with a camera. Um, so now, but then the RX-107 was still tempting because of all the latest features. They put a lot of the features of the A9, eye tracking and video, animal eye tracking. Um, they added a whole lot of features that really made me interested in the RX-107. But then I dabbled with that a little. But that's what ended up bringing me back to the A6100. It was such a great deal in comparison to the RX-107. But then Sony came and did this. This is my dream camera. As I put in a recent post, dream, let me back up. My dream RX-100-esque camera. I really like the RX100 too. I got great results out of it. I was really shocked by the low light capabilities. Um, I was able to take some great night shots. There's one shot I have in a diner here in Durham that I really liked. I took it in the evening. It was something that was, this camera is so small. This, this form factor is so small that no one even paid me any mind when I was taking it. I love that. And to get a camera that is almost top notch, top notch photo quality in such a small package is amazing but then here's the thing so fine you say then go buy an rx 104 but here's the problem but right now brand new they're selling for 898 dollars for hundreds less you can get an a6100 pick up a sigma lens and you're right there now, granted not as small not as compact but it it basically makes it that's not that's a, that's not going to happen the rx 107 now has all of the features i want lovely camera comma but now they put a lens in it that I don't want. Is it a great lens? Yes. Do I want it? No. 24-200 is not something I'm looking for in a very small camera like this. I would love something that is basically gives me a form factor smaller than an old film camera, but then gives me a fast lens. But then also gives me a reach of 70 mil equivalent with f2.8 so I can get a little background blur and a little bit of reach. That's perfect. Now, but... Even though they're marketing as a vlogging camera, here's the thing. This is a camera that is an RX-107 with the lens I want 
Oh, and another thing they took out with the 6 and 7, I believe, is the ND filter. This, because the mechanical is 1 two thousandths of a second, digital is 32 thousandths of a second, great. But here's the thing, I love having an ND filter in here. So I can shoot basically in any lighting condition between the F1.8 on up to the 32 thousandths of a second um, E shutter along with the ND filter. This camera is basically ready for anything. And they put all of that into this camera. Now, a lot of people lament the fact that they took away the, let me see if I can get you to focus there. You took away the EVF, but here's the thing. This camera is too small for me to use with the EVF. I never did, I bought the, I sold the two, got the three, mainly for the EVF. Got the EVF, didn't like the EVF, why? Because this is just, for me, it just felt silly. This camera with this size, with a viewfinder just wasn't something I would use. So what do I do? I end up using it, pull out the screen, using low shots. And that's the other thing, this camera has such fantastic autofocus. It did for the two and three, even better now, that I can just trust the camera. This one now, above the two and three, adds touch screen. So now, if I want, I already know Sony's gonna focus on it. That's one other thing. I, it is the system above all systems for me personally, because the autofocus is just amazing. I've tried many other brands. I've had Canon full frame. I've had Nikon DSLRs. I've had Olympus. I've had a Panasonic. I've had Fujifilm. Oh, Fujifilm. I love the look and feel of their cameras. I love the image quality, the colors, all those things. I've done two or three rounds with them now. And I just recently, that's what I had right before I bought the 6100. But in the end, I want the picture when it comes to digital. I can accept a lot of things about all oh, the feel, the look, the experience with film. I have film cameras I can do that with. With a digital camera, I just want the shot. I just want it to focus. I want it to find what I want. I want the camera to sort it out if it can and just simply take the shot. And Sony does that. And that is what I have once again with the A6100 and the A6000. Now, I'll do another video about this later, but Sigma really saved them for me also. But that's another video because honestly, if it probably wasn't for these three Sigma lenses, the 56, the 30, and the 16, I may not even be using Sony right now. That was the one weak spot for me in the APS-C Sony system, and now that has been solved. But in any event, this is the star of the show here. This has been fantastic. I've already shown some sample shots on my blog post. I updated it. Now, again, everybody talks about vlogging, but this is a great little stills camera. It has all the things I loved about the 2 and 3. It has the great lens. They even tweak the colors for video to make it more, a little more lifelike. That's in here also. It is a great camera. Now, one of the main reasons I'm shooting this, because there's a million, I don't say a million, that's a bit much. There are many ZV-1 videos on right now. Everyone's done a video. But what I want to do here is just the only thing I could try to add to the dialogue is basically say that I'm going to shoot this video with this. And I'm going to take this down. And that's another thing. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how it does, because I'm going to try to do the same thing the opposite. See how now I'm holding this up and it's still focused on my eyes. Great, which you want most of the time. But if you wanted to focus on a product, you have to then put it in front of your face so it doesn't see you anymore. I'm very much looking to see how the other camera does, the ZV-1, this camera here does, using its product feature. I'm imagining from what I'm seeing in the video, from what I've been reading, that it's going to be great. But I'm very much looking forward to that. The only thing is, I do, and I do appreciate that they have the dead cat here. I'm not going to likely use. I'm not going to use it for this. I'm going to actually take the road mic, mic road video mic, <laughs> the road video micro mic here, and put it on here. And then I'm going to have to basically, I'm going to have to put the light panel light just for comparison's sake. I'll put it on another small tripod. But I'm very much looking forward to see how these compare back to back. And now I'll let you on a little secret. The main reason I shot this video just so I could shoot one and then in the exact same environment shoot a video using this right after. And again, you know, a lot of people saying there is the, I love the placement of the video button now. That's really convenient. I really like this panel where now when I fold it up, it's protecting the screen and it powers the camera off. Pull this out and it powers the camera up and you're ready to go just like that. Just easy, just simple, just an enjoyable camera experience. And I've really had a good time just having this around. Even broke out some cargo shorts the other day, something I haven't had in a while. <laughs> and so I could just throw this camera in a side pocket. That's something you cannot do. And I've been really happy with the stills images that have been coming out of this. But now that I've gotten through my little 
RX-102, RX-103 walk down memory lane with stills, I do plan on trying to create some more videos just so I can see what this thing can do. I already had for the A6100, I already had the Bluetooth grip. I'm thinking I have a good reach. I'm thinking people are talking about 24 not being wide enough, but again, I will take 24 at the wide end with F1.8 and I'll take whatever that comes with. If I have to, I'll buy an extender. But I'm more happy about there being a 24 mil F1.8 Zeiss lens at my disposal in such a small package. All right, now I'm gonna stop this video here and then I'm gonna come back and con either combine the two, let's see how I get on with my newly acquired Creative Cloud Adobe video <laughs> application that I can't remember the name of right now. Um, I may merge the two, maybe two separate videos, but I'm gonna do that just for comparison sake and try to shoot. And we are back. I just shot the last video with the A6100 and now I'm shooting back to, that was the A6100, Rode Video Micro, and the Photix M180 uh, light. Um, moved the mic and the light onto this setup. I had to put the mic on a, had to put the light on a separate tripod, but that's a small price to pay. Um, I have the Rode Video Micro mic set up and theoretically in this setting, without much background, without much wind, I probably could have gone ahead and just used the dead cat and then mounted the light onto the hot shoe. But those are options that are available to me on this that were not available to me and that would not be available to me on some other RX100 cameras. And I really do like that. Um, and again, one of the things I'm gonna show here is again, we're not looking at 16 mil, which is a 24 full frame equivalent, 24 millimeter full frame equivalent. Um, but we are looking at f1.8 here and one as i mentioned before i am now going to be able should be able to lift this up now and have it focus on that instead of me without having to block my face and it is doing it successfully there's my eyes clearly in view in the background but it is focusing on now the a6100 as intended take it down it's back on me put it back up again and it's focused on the camera i mean right away even putting the camera and perhaps i could change the settings maybe it's not unresponsive and fast but i'm amazed at how fast it knows and goes right back i mean this could get boring to you but this is amazing to me um that's one thing i really like and then this is just a small package i'm staring at this tiny camera with this tiny lens as compared to looking down a gaping maw of this wonderful lens a little while ago well, again superior setup but what i'm saying is this is a number of components coming together this is a separate lens. This is a camera body by itself. This is having to buy a small rig setup to accommodate having a mic and a light and still be able to see the screen. This is a swing out screen on the side the way most video cameras are instead of one over the top. I don't know if it's better, but me glancing to the side feels more natural here than it does continuing to look up. I feel like I'm looking past the camera. Um, Again, this is just a wonderful solution. I really, really like it. Um, I have not yet downloaded and edited any video with it, but from what I'm seeing right here on the screen, I'm very happy with it so far. Um, I am, for the first time, honestly looking out and trying to find some excuse to go out vlogging with this camera. And that's something honest I have never said before because it just seems ridiculous. I mean, come on. I'll, you can see the pictures of this setup. Um, in my other in my uh, in my blog post on this camera, but it's a great setup for the house. But I would not the A7 III. Forget it. I'm not going to do it. A7 III, A7 II. I am not walking around with the with that at arm's length with a mic with a light, and can't even see the can't even monitor myself, if you will, unless I had a separate phone and the phone app going at the same time. Got this set up, but then I really liked it. But once I got it set up, I am not carrying this around with me. And then even if I could, it would have to, it would have to have a dedicated camera bag. And it's not something I could just throw in a bag because the small um, adapter I had to mount the light would basically snap off the mic, um, the the <laughs> the dead cat as they call it, the the uh, the blocker for the wind that would come off and it's exposed. This is one setup I literally can throw in a side cargo pant pocket to get. A close enough experience for me um, and also get some wonderful stills I mean I have for the first time usually I'm, I'm a person I'll find a way to have a camera with me film or digital I'll have a dedicated real real camera with me last two or three days for the first time ever I just been going out with this and I love it it's really nice now will this replace anything else no but what I'm saying is on an everyday basis this is far better than good enough to document the pictures I like to take on a daily basis. I went to a um, favorite restaurant of ours recently um, and took some shots 
and had it completely on the wrong settings. I mean, this, it basically ended up being a high, high ISO. I had to set it one two thousandths of a second, but I had a camera in my pocket. I pulled it out, flipped the lens out, took a few shots in the counter. And again, I'll put some links in the description here and it pulled it off. It jacked up the ISO to like 3200, but this little one inch sensor did so well that they are perfectly usable pictures and I like it. Now, usable is strong. It's a silly little picture of a cake container in a, in a display case in a, a Jamaican restaurant that we like to go to. But when you look at the picture, I mean, you can imagine how nice it would be to have a camera like that that can give you that level of quality in such a small package and something that you can literally hold in the palm of your hands. I'm very happy. I feel like what this has happened here, and is it is basically to me in RX 102, all the best features of that: the ND filter, the 24 to 70 f1 f2.8, um, married with an RX, the best of 100, like RX 107, and that brings the eye autofocus, all the different new features, and uh, all the the whole processing behind this new autofocusing um, processor that they have along with a tally light, along with a, yes, not metal, but plastic, but this is already much less prone, prone to slip out of my hands. I love the RX100 feel, the metal, but it always felt like a wet bar of soap. First thing I always did was get a little grip for it. This comes with a grip built in. This has a slide out screen on the side. So I, I really don't care, really tilt up, flip out, doesn't matter to me. I like the articulation. I don't mind losing the viewfinder when you look at all the other features. I would, because if you ask me, okay, Eric, if they priced the RX107 exactly the same and put a viewfinder in <laughs> and added a swing out screen and a few other features, would you pay another $400 for it? The answer would be no. There's not a $400 to me value difference to make me go out and purchase the RX107 over the ZV-1. That is not a ding on the ZV-1. I'm sorry, that is not a ding on the RX100 Mark 7. That's still a great stills camera if that's what you're looking for and that's your primary focus but i have other cameras for that i'm looking for a great all-around camera and for less than a hundred dollars 150 dollars less than an rx 104 as i just looked last week going for 898 dollars i can now have the best parts of an rx 107 minus the viewfinder plus additional video features like this plus improved color science for $140 less than a model that came out years ago. I mean, that's a no brainer to me. But anyway, thank you very much. I'm going to shut this one off. And again, if I get this editing thing going right, I will be posting both of these videos either together or back to back. Thank you.